a problem like this. We have y equals ck and a pi x minus 1. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple things that we want to make sure that we understand when graphing our reciprocal property, our reciprocal um, trigonometric functions. The first thing we need to understand is this is the same thing. Remember, secant is a reciprocal of cos cosine. So therefore, this function can be rewritten as um, 1 over the cosine of pi x minus 1. Right? These functions are reciprocals of each other. So therefore, to help us graph the secant, what we're actually going to do is graph the cosine. So for a minute, what I'd like you to do is kind of step back and forget we're talking about secant. And I would just like you to see how can we graph the cosine of pi x or minus 1. How would we, what would that graph look like? So we're going to go back to kind of what we worked on in the last assignment and work on graphing just the cosine of pi x minus 1. So to do that, we go back through our, our normal stages. And hopefully when you guys took your quiz, you wrote down each one of these because it's step-by-step -step format. The first thing we do is determine our amplitude. Remember, the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a, where a is going to be your coefficient of your function, what's being multiplied by there, which, I'm sorry, we're going to look at the cosine of pi x, which in this case is 1. So therefore, absolute value of 1 is equal to 1. Then we take a look at the period. Remember, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, where b is your coefficient of your variable. So our coefficient of our variable is pi. So we're going to have 2 pi divided by pi, which equals 2. Then what we did is we looked at the x scale. And remember, the x scale for your cosine and secant, or cosine and sine functions, always what we took is we, is we took um, our period and divided it by 4. So now we get an x scale of 1 half. And what the x scale tells us, yes? Yes. What, I'm saying, what the x scale tells us is the distance between your critical points. So a lot of times I always wrote critical points in the four. I'm just kind of using different vocabulary as far as the x scale, because that's really the critical. We're going to use the x scale to get our critical points. All right? um, and then we have a start and an end of our initial period. Remember, these functions continue on and on forever. So why are we starting and we're ending? Well, that's just for our initial period, because once we can graph one initial period, then we can continue it in, e in either direction. So to find, the p to find the start, what we do is we take what's inside of our function, and we set that equal to 0, and we set what's inside our function equal to 2 pi. And the reason we set it equal to 0 and 2 pi, because in our parent graphs, that was the initial period between 0 and 2 pi. So now we just solve for x. So we get x equals 0, and therefore we get x equals 2. So now we huh? The minus 1 is not inside the function. It's outside the function. So that's going to affect it. But remember, the minus 1 is going to affect. That's a vertical translation. So therefore, that's a good point, though. We're going to have to make sure we write in shift down 1. And that's a lot of the reasons why when we write these problems, if you guys remember when I wrote in the standard form, um, I wrote d plus a cosine of bx minus c. A lot of times we write the vertical translation in front so we don't get it confused with what's inside the function. That's why I put those parentheses around there, so to make sure we don't get confused. So again, we need to graph the secant. But before we can graph the secant, it's going to be helpful to graph the cosine. So I'm going to graph my nice little x axis here. And I told you guys to start at your first dot, which we said is going to be at 0. Well, at x equals 0, luckily for us, that's also the y axis. So I can just graph a vertical line for my y axis. All right. We take a look at our amplitude, and we know our amplitude is going to be 1. So since there, well, there is a vertical translation, so we'll get to that in a second. So normally, our graph would go up 1 and down 1. But since we have a vertical translation, I'm going to have to go down 1 again. So I'm going to have to go down an extra tick mark, because I know my graph is going to be shifted downwards. So now let's go and get our x scale. So remember, our x scale is 1 half. So there's four critical points that we talked about, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, between each critical point is 1 half. So that means the first point would be 1 half. Next point would be 1. Next point would be 3 halves. And the next point would be 2. We can also do this in the negative direction. So you'd have negative 1 half, negative 1, negative 3 halves, and negative 2. 
All right, so it's very important that you guys be able to set up your x scale and dependent on your period. So now we're looking at the cosine graph. Now remember the parent function of the cosine graph started at 1 comma 0. But now what we're doing is we're shifting that graph down 1. Okay? So actually what I'll do to help you guys out is I'm going to graph the parent function first, then we'll graph the transformation so you guys can see it. Because it might be helpful to graph the parent graph. So if I was going to graph it without a minus 1, you guys, the graph would look, I have a 1, okay, the graph would look like this. Right? That's cosine of x without the vertical translation. Right? Okay. One thing I want you guys to notice that. At each one of these points, at 1 half and 3 over 2, what is the value of my function? 0, right? So if you look at this function, if I put 1 over 0, 1 over 0 is undefined. All right? You can't divide by 0. So one thing we want to notice when we're graphing the secant function is at each one of these x-intercepts, it's undefined. All right? But let's actually graph what we got to shift this down, right? So that means I'm just going to move every point down one unit. So really, the cosecant graph is going to look something like this. OK? Really, that's what the cosecant graph looks like. And then I can continue that in the negative direction. So it can go down, up, come back up, and then to there. OK? So this is what the cose this is what cosine looks with a subtract, with a uh, vertical translation shifted down. Does everybody follow me with this? All right. So now, if you guys remember, I talked about at each one of these x-intercepts, if you were to kind of shift this up, you'd notice that this would have been an x-intercept and this would have been an x-intercept. At each one of those x-intercepts, we, uh, we had our value equal to 0. So we had an undefined value. So in graphing, when graphing the secant function, the reciprocal functions, what you're going to do is you're going to take all of the intercepts. All the intercepts are when your secant function are, is undefined. So what we're going to do is create vertical asymptotes. We're not really going to create them. That's where they are. Okay. So if you were to shift that graph back up, you can see that each one of these asymptotes is where we would have a, um, an, an intercept, meaning my cosine function would be equal to 0. So therefore, they'd be undefined, so I'm going to create a vertical asymptote. Now remember, asymptotes are where your graph is going to approach, right? Your graph goes into approaching an asymptote. A lot of sometimes we'll say, you know, approaches, it never touches, never crosses. Um, but when we're talking about vertical asymptotes, our graph is going to approach it. So how does our graph look into approaching it? Well, when I showed other ways how, we, how those points work, and what you'll notice is the points of my cosine graph, the minimum and the maximum, are, have the, share the same points with the secant. So the graph, these, my, my midpoint is shared. However, it's going to kind of form a parabola going in the opposite direction, approaching the asymptote. So here, it's going to go in the opposite direction, approaching the asymptote. And then again, this graph, just like the cosine graph, is going to repeat over and over and over again. But I just wanted to kind of show you um, what it looked like from two of your periods over there. Anybody have any questions? Just to really recap, find the reciprocal function, graph it like you did for all of those problems, graph it, do whatever transformation you have to do, then wherever there is an x-intercept, create a vertical asymptote, and then at every max min, you're going to create kind of a parabola going in the opposite direction, approaching it. So to finalize my graph, I don't want to show the cosine graph. That's not a part of the secant graph. We use it as an aid. But it's really not a part of our graph. So your final graph is going to look something like that. OK? So we have to the yes. Yes. So don't draw it in some pen. That wouldn't be good. Because it's not really the graph. We just use it as an aid.